how do we look? Are we in HD? <laughs> you look like twin brothers. <laughs> right. yeah. I, yeah. I thought I'd show off the guns today. Yeah, too late. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, welcome guys to the video. Today I have an interview with uh, Mike and Sam from Balance My Hormones. You have seen them before my channel. I've been on their channel as well. So welcome, guys. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Hello, the UK. This is Belgium greeting you. And if this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe so you can learn more about fitness and nutrition, hormones and anti-aging, all this to optimize your life overall. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. <laughs> Today we had some interesting toppings planned, um, maybe for the European guys, the Belgian and UK guys, as well as for the United States uh, men out there. So, um, Mike and Sam, so tell me your views on the comparison of testosterone cream versus injections uh, to start with. All right, so my opinion is I've used both. I've used both creams and injections in the past, and they both could work very well. And for some people, they don't get on with either, or they don't get on with one and they switch to the other. Um, what, we've, what I found with myself personally was I used creams um, for a short period of time, about four or five years, uh, on my part of my TRT journey. And it was a scrotal cream uh, based on a PLO gel, applied it scrotally. This is nearly 20 years ago, and it, and it worked fine. Um, later on, I switched to the injections because there were some advantages. One, the doctor I was seeing at the time didn't prescribe creams, and I was stuck with injections. So it was that was kind of the option I had. So it wasn't really a choice. So it wasn't really a yeah. choice. Well, the, yeah, I mean, it's. I suppose it's finding out what works for you, but I suppose a big part of it is, are you happy to apply a cream once or twice a day? Um, as you can imagine, I mean, even the prospect of it for some people is like, well, I absolutely couldn't do that. And then when they get down to it and they're brushing their teeth or like having a shower, most, most guys who train, you know, they're at least showering at least once a day aren't they you know maybe twice and it's really easy to sort of fit in but there are some guys that are sort of adamant that that's not going to happen or we'll try it and you know it's it's uh it's an issue don't want to you know keep the scrotum sort of free of hair and do that sort of admin around it um so i think that that plays a plays a part doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, but also the fear that if i leave the tube at home if i'm away on a trip the window of it running out of my bloodstream is a lot quicker you know, then if I have the injection, there's a bit more of a window. And that's the same could be said for uh, when we do the trough readings. You have a whole day on a trough reading for an injection, and yet you've got a small one to two hour window to really nail the 12 or 24 hour time frame for your trough level, your lowest point. So that could be a bit more inconvenient. And the other inconvenience is with injections, you could do a finger prick. It not, it not that we recommend always, but if someone just want to do a quick home at home finger prick, test um, that can save them a little bit of money and time so you can get that window better but if you have creams you can't have it on your fingers so therefore you have to do a venipuncture blood test which means you've got to book in with someone to have the bloods drawn It'd give you a really false high reading otherwise yeah, give you yeah. A massively false obviously reading. like drawing testosterone from under the skin potentially into the blood sample so, so. i mean ideally for both if you could do venipuncture but of course there's just certain logistics that people can't always get to a blood draw place it's nice to have a quick check to see see where you are but then you have the, the other side of it is that if you are injecting, you know, just from a logistical point of view, if you're, if you're injecting and you are traveling, you know, if you're like a pilot or, you know, even some guys in, like, in the, you know, in the armed forces or if you work offshore, yeah, absolutely. Just having the cream there is, is much easier. So some guys actually choose yeah. to do that instead, don't they? Um, well, also psychologically. So you've got to get yourself ready, get your area ready mentally prepared to do the injection but make sure your space is very clean your hands are washed uh to in order to get your, your injection ready and that, that takes time where the cream you do your one pump you put on your scrotum and away you go so the, and that's just the i suppose the there are the, the the things where you've got to work with the doctor to find out what works for you right in terms of actually getting sufficient blood levels and things like that but it's not you know i think there's a bit of a uh, like a history of, of topicals being renowned for not working you know so the, you know these branded sort of ones that you know are lower in in the uh, in sort of percentage and of testosterone and, and don't absorb as well um you know not actually compound into a higher strength you know for the scrotum and things like that um you know there's a, there's a fair amount of that that comes with it you know people just refuse you know point blank you know i'm not, I'm not using that I, topicals don't work 
you know, that's sort of thing, all right? the time. And yeah. then and sometimes the, the fear is they would transfer the, the cream or the topical to their partner. Yeah, what about the fear uh, around the creams, including transference and uh, compliance? It's a yeah. funny one, that, because <laughs> you, we usually say, uh, you know, with, with the creams, you're applying it to your scrotum. Okay, so the chance of you, you know, even you know, with a partner getting exposed, I mean, unless you take the phrase literally going balls deep, a <laughs> chance you're going to get exposure. Um, but likewise, we had, a, we had a client that talked to us the other day, we were talking about the option of topical. Uh, and, and he said, uh, and especially about the scrotal application, but in general, his mind's thinking, well, what happens if my dog licks it? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, your dog's not going to lick yeah. your scrotum. Why is the dog he, going he, to lick your scrotum? He thought about, <laughs> he thought, well, because he used to rub uh, gel on his arm, and that's what he was referring to, but it's just yeah. a bit awkward. Yeah. I think you had one too. <laughs> Yeah, another one is like, yeah, I'm, uh, it was just Harry, Harry phrased it. He's obviously like transfer risk he's worried about. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that because of the risk with like my nephew and niece. So that's just like, <laughs> I'm just not sure you had understood that or phrased that properly. But um, I think that is a concern. But I, I think, you know, I mean, you, you use the cream, right? I mean, there's not really, uh, you just, uh, most people either just time it or, um, you know, it's usually something like four hours later. You know, the doctor say something like that before, you know, any sort of activity, but... Well, it's just personal preference. Yeah, I, I, I find it very easy to do. There's not much to worry about, uh, about uh, uh, transference to others, uh, children or whatever. Uh, the only annoyance I think there is is um, maybe if you uh, apply it early in the morning and you want to work out around 10-ish something and you want to take a shower afterwards. Mm. Maybe that's a bit too early to take that shower, I guess. Do you reapply and just be a little higher that day? Yeah, depending. it just depends on the psychology behind where you. The thing is, though, obviously, a lot of guys do that sort of pattern, and in terms of symptom relief, they don't really complain of, oh, you know, I just absolutely, I, I felt completely different after that. I think you know, a lot is absorbed. You know, it's 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 not like it's going to suddenly tank your testosterone levels. You know, and the same goes for obviously if you're on a twice day application. You know, and you you happen to miss an evening one because you go out for the evening. You know, there's, I think because of like the rhythm and the consistency of what you're doing, uh, you know, on a, on a twice daily basis, you know, or once a day, you know, I think mm -hmm. it feel different, you know? So even though people are like, oh, well, I'm worried about that. I don't want to commit to like doing it twice a day. Um, to be fair, you, you can be a bit sort of, you know, hit and miss with it occasionally and not really get a drastic or any sort of change. You know, have that happen to guys, you know, and, and they're not like, oh my God, I felt awful that day. Yeah, of course. But uh, what do you recommend about uh, swimming pools for someone that lives on a holiday and is planning to go swimming ev every morning in the hotel? So what about that? Can you just go into the swimming pool and don't worry about the testosterone getting in the water or losing it uh, too soon uh, yourself? What are your worries there? The recommendation was just leave it a couple of hours before, mm. before you went swimming or had uh, sweat, sweating at the gym or... Mm. Uh, it's usually a couple of hours sort of difference and like i said sure you know, as long as you're not like a it'd be different if you're like a professional swimmer and like doing it every day you know yeah. three times a day an injectable type of sort of administration might be a better option for you but um yeah you swim before get up and if you're training that is swim in the morning but other than that just i you know uh, just leave it you can have another application later in the day no, I, don't, I don't think it'd be a massive issue in terms of keeping levels yeah of course not too much uh, worries about that so then when you are using the creams, uh, when to have the blood level done uh, in the lab? When uh, should you check that? So obviously if you want to look like you've got these massive levels, you can test them six hours later, five hours later. But for usefulness, so because a lot, a lot of times the, the clients, the doctor's patients will say, okay, well, is it still working at 12 hours or 24 hours? So those who do twice a day dosing, you, you know, you want to get it in that window between probably you know, 11 and no more than 14 hours to see. And, and that's just a logistic thing. It's a lot harder, like I said earlier, to do it with the creams. And then also if you're on a 24 hour once a day dosing, you want to get it at no earlier than 23 hours and no later than 25 hours to see what the trough level is. Because if you're too low, if you push it out to 26 or 27 hours, you're going to be low anyway. It's kind of clear just system in most cases. And so that doesn't really tell you anything. But if you're really low at 23 or 24 hours, then the doctor may want to either adjust the concentration or uh, mm -hmm. frequency of application to twice a day. Yeah, so it, I mean, a good way of doing it is just to 
they do it in the morning. So if you're, you know, there's usually at least a morning application, usually. <clears throat> so if you're, you know, you wake up in the morning, go and get your blood done, and then just you know, maybe take your cream with you if you're going to work afterwards or something like that, and then and then, and then do it after, something like that. And another benefit to the cream, you know, <laughs> take it to work with you. Then it's mm -hmm. taken sort of injection supplies, but um, that'd be, that's the normal sort of process, isn't it? You could do a peak and a trough as well, sort of get a comparison, see what sort of levels you're, you're sort of getting to, and then, and then where you are sort of that time later. I know that Dr. Keith Nichols recommends uh, doing it uh, five hours after the morning application, for example, to have a, a mean level, not the highest, not the lowest. That makes sense. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's good yeah. to make sure that you've got in there so go five, six hours later. But for some of our clients that, you know, they're cost conscious and they've got to pick a point in time, I think the worst thing is to know if you're going to be too little at that 12 or 24 hour point. So I think if you pick one, you know but you can always revisit because people are having their bloods done very frequently mm. and that can always be one of the, the time points that are, that are measured i can see that why that'd be a good idea yeah. though you know? uh, absolutely i think it's a great idea oh so good to i suppose see the trough sometimes see see if you're getting too low you know um yeah, uh, there's, there's more than one symptom resolution <laughs> yeah. you know as well it's, it's the key right if you, if yeah. you have issues there you might explore it a bit more but um yeah that's that's probably what we'd, what we'd see maybe two blood tests then yeah, yeah. Okay, then about the cream. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, Mike, go ahead. I said we, we've seen some good levels on people at the 12 or 24 hour mark, even the 24 hour mark. Mm. You know, I've seen at the 12 hours, uh, 40 nanomolar per liter, some of them, mm. to 30 nanomolar per liter. Yeah. And even at uh, 24 hours later, they're, they're still yeah. well within, within range. So it's. Uh, I think that's the thing. Most people think that with creams, because of this history of you know the, the branded sort of creams, you lather all over yourself and not reaching good levels. You know that they think you're not going to get to a good level, but it is it's effective, isn't it? Is people really get to those real therapeutic levels, and you know the titration of the the dose you can have with you know the, the cream as well. It's uh, it's one of those things people are surprised when you know they they maybe you know I might speak to someone and they, they they ask about it, particularly with like you know the the info that's coming from America now. Like obviously <clears throat> our dogs have used the cream for quite a good time, but the you know the the recent sort of you know, spread of information about it in the US, obviously more people are intrigued and um, they get really good levels, you know, some guys needing to drop to like a once a day, you know, or a twice a day at much lower sort of percentage, you know, um, you know people were quite pleasantly surprised well when they see their levels, you know, when they go onto the cream from, from injectables, you know, ex bodybuilders and things like that, they've never, you know, they've always, it's always been, you know, if they've, if they've damaged themselves or something in the past from, you know, sort of steroid uh, use or something like that. And it's always been a mental block that it has to be something injected, you know, to have an effect. But let some of those guys, you know, sort of eating their words about yeah. it, it's finding that, that that is their optimal protocol is like a twice day cream application, you know, nothing else, just yeah. cracking on. Yeah. Oh, especially with the low SHGB people when the, um, you know, they're just hyper excretors. Mm. And, and the, the fact the cream could be kind of match the diurnal pattern a bit better yeah that's another benefit we talk about benefits of cream is yeah. that you can't you obviously have the, the nice rhythm of high frequency and then obviously if you need to reduce the dose down you know it can be compounded as such to sort of get you to where you need to be if you're like one of those you know single figure shbg type people yeah that would be yeah. another benefit obviously injections i'm sure you could get there but i would argue and argue with like more hassle yeah, a lot of American uh, friends on the forum and on uh, YouTube, on our channel as well, are doing uh, daily subcutaneous injections uh, of testosterone. They're very happy with that. They can lower the dose uh, a lot uh, because they have a lot of frequent injections. But because, uh, before we go there, uh, back to the cream once more, do we really need the 20% testosterone cream? Or will other percentages work uh, as good? Because I know Balance My Hormones in the UK delivers all kinds of percentages. Uh, explain that a bit, uh, guys. It's interesting with the percentages. Yeah. Uh, 20 percent, what's 20 percent of? Is 20 percent of, you know, 100 milliliters, 20 percent of a gram? I mean, what was that? Uh, well, that's where it comes nature, from, isn't it? Yeah. It's 200 milligrams per uh, gram was a, was a 20 percent cream. I think it was a common formulation maybe, but I think by some American pharmacies were, were, were doing and that. I think what um, I originally used was you know, 10 so when I was in America or Canada or somewhere yeah, similar, right? California, California, America. So the thing we notice is the amount per dose, delivery per dose, makes a lot more sense to describe it that way. 
you know, we can raise the concentration. It's the question is how much are you getting per pump per dose? So and then you can break it. Like I think the 20% that's described um, by Dr. Nichols is two smaller pumps to equal that 20%. So I think two pumps are a quarter a milliliter each. Uh, and then they're equal to 50 milligrams each. So you do two pumps to get 100 milligrams, where the pump that um, our, our pharmacy partners use uh, through, through uh, Bouncer Hormones is uh, half a milliliter and it's 100 milligrams. And that's for. Mm. Uh, I don't know what, so, I mean, you know, an example would be like a common, you know, uh, a sort of dose per pump, maybe 150 milligrams per gram uh, or, or per half gram, sorry. Half a gram, per, so per pump. If the if the pump is half a gram, now that's a thirty percent cream. If you if you're doing it from a gram, you know. So it literally the 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 way that it is easier to titrate and sort of relate to is is how much you're getting per dose because you may get a variance in size of you know actually what what you're getting. So like you know I think Dr Nichols uses like a, a quarter. You said yeah, a quarter. Yeah. You know, you can use it can have a half or whatever. So it, you may go, oh well, that's what I need. Your pharmacy may say, well, I know you just need one pump of half a gram after you've got titrated into whatever works for you. It may just be one pump. So it's more about dose per application. Absolutely. You know, and and you know, to answer the question, you know, guys can be on anything from sort of fifty, you know, right up to the the two hundred milligram per dose mark. You know, it just it's just you know absorption. Like I say, it's personal. It makes you feel good. Those sorts of things. So, and they do work. You know, there's variance in blood level as well. On there, you know, with, with all of those. So, um, you may need more. You may need less. Um, so yeah, all of those differences work. I'm sure you've heard of um, different dosages being combined combined with the people as well. Yeah, sure. Things uh, several earlier to have a symptom relief. Some people yeah. uh, just need more than others. Eh? And that's it. People don't, people don't think that you can titrate up and down with the cream. You know, you can do a, a every, every couple of weeks or a month, whatever, when you're doing your bloods and things, when you're getting dialed in, you know, you, you can actually, you can up the dose, you can drop the dose, whatever works to change frequency, like I said, once a day, uh, twice a day. So it is titratable as well. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the reason why the Americans uh, like the 20% cream to have uh, 50 milligrams uh, per quarter of milliliter so they can administer with the same, the same uh, topic click system 50, 100, 150 milligrams as they choose. Yeah, two clicks, you know, twice per day, three clicks twice per day, once. Yeah. When I was doing the cream, it was in a spoon. You had a pot and a spoon. And you, would, you would have a tiny little measure spoon, either a, a half or a quarter of a teaspoon. And you would, uh, you have to like make sure it was level, and then you just applied it. So it wasn't that it measured. That's some neat advances. Yeah, so that's that 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 twenty-five years ago or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a lot of guys prefer the cream because they just plain hate injections. But how will they combine, combine that with uh, HCG if uh, they need that? And what's your uh, opinion on HCG? Yeah, so the usually big fear, and you know, I have personal friends that have, have tried both of them, uh, they, they don't like the long intramuscular injection that they have to do into the muscle. So mm. subcutaneous is, is easy, it's a doddle. I mean, it's a tiny little needle popped into, into your abdomen. Um, I think the only difficulty is if someone's not uh, well-trained and that's something that we put nurses and the doctor shows the patient how to do it, train them on how to reconstitute the HCG to do it properly, and then how to do just a very easy subcutaneous injection. Mm. So that's not usually an issue for those people who are needle phobic. The big issue is the intramuscular injection part. And since the mainstay of their TRT, the base of the TRT is the testosterone replacement from the cream, the HCG is kind of an add-on, kind of a bonus. And so even if they go without, it's not the end of the world. They still have some benefit continuing on after. Yeah, I think that the way that it's used, um, you know, it can be low dose, high frequency. It can be like 100 IUs, you know, 150 IUs every day, every other day. It can be 250 IUs twice a week, you know, some guys bump it up higher when they're, you know, well, two or three times a week, 250 IU, something like that. They can bump it up higher, you know, if they're nearing a, you know, uh, trying for a baby, something like that. I think there's a, I think it's, it, it's usually the guys that are anxious about fertility, you know, and preserving fertility that, that sort of, sort of go with it. Um, you know, I, I know there's definitely the choice of um, be on TRT, cream or injections or anything like that. And then when you get nearer the time, you know, then, then start utilizing it, which which some guys do. 
Um, I still think there's anxiety about the potential risk of you know, fertility being affected. There is the aesthetic size of it. You know, that there's definitely a psychological part for some men. Um, you know, if you're getting testicular shrinkage, they might just want to use that for aesthetics, you know, and uh, although, you know, I'm okay with it and, you know, that, that, that's me personally, you know, it's, it might be something they want to do. So again, it can be a, a very sort of dosage for that, you know, it could be lower, lower dose, high frequency. Um, as low as 250 RU, a few times or, a week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but for, for just for like uh, aesthetics and things, yeah. it can be even, even lower, can't it? So, um, so that's how it's, you know, it's, it's used, you, you, you find out what works for you, but normally sort of, you know, 250 twice a week is a common one if someone's like, you know, going to try for kids in the, in the near future, maybe bump it up. Just, you know, some guys do sperm count testing, you know, before, during, you know, and sort of utilize it in that sort of way. Um, and in terms of our opinion on it, um, in terms of therapeutic benefit, I think some men feel better on it, maybe because there's a relief of, I'm, I'm protecting myself, you know, they think, oh, you know, my testicles are being maintained, you know, they're, they're, a, they're a normal size and things like that. Um, you know, some men just say anecdotally, they just feel a little bit better. But then you've got, you know, completely the yeah. same number of men in the other camp that are just like, I don't like the, the effect it has on me. I feel like I'm a little bit imbalanced with it, you know. Um, yeah, I've also heard some people have some, some types like neuropathy in the leg. They couldn't really pick up the leg of their foot. And it wasn't until they started HCG treatment that did that result. It helps that. Yeah. But they, honestly, I think there's some like rat studies and things on spinal cord injury, I think, with HCG, where it's like actually helped with, with healing. And that's interesting to me because I, I, being a physiotherapist and dealing with spinal cord injury patients, I'm like, well, maybe, maybe yeah. that's going to be something. I've, I've heard two cases you know, of this future. already. Oh, really? Clients that have come through to us. So awesome. They swore that you know, they couldn't get out of bed and even be on testosterone treatment. And mm -hmm. once they had HCG, yeah. it, it kind of restored them. They were able to move really straight away. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, the, I, you know, I think you know, it, 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 it's, it's a choice, obviously. I think there's, there's equal numbers of men that don't really fancy it and want to deal with it at the time. And, or may do a sperm count and monitor sperm count, you know, whilst they're not taking HCG, because as you know, it's not everyone gets a you know, massive drop. Uh, and it takes one sperm, doesn't it? You know, yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. there's been guys that made the mistake of thinking testosterone is a, is a, is a contraceptive. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely not, not. <laughs> and ending up with a bigger family because of it, you know? Um, so yeah, I think it's personal. I think it's something that yeah, it's not a one size fits all for this sort of thing. Yeah, just feeling informed. I mean, for many, many years when I did the creams, I, I didn't have the option of HCG. I didn't use it. I didn't use. I, maybe five years later, ten years later, I did a short course of HCG from from the doctor's clinic. But um, then years and years I went without. And then I think as I mentioned before, when I finally added HCG to to the testosterone treatment, and then I actually got a sperm test to see if it was even working, I was surprised. Uh, despite having a varicose seal, uh, despite having been on just exogenous TRT for you know, 20 years, that my sperm count was you know, quite high, actually, mm. 36 million, high motility, over 70% motility. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was surprising that I could be on TRT for all these years, add some HCG, and if I needed to have children, I could. I did mostly for the aesthetics, though. Yeah, I don't know. There's, I don't think, and I'd love to see some if there are, I don't think there are many of any longer term studies of hcg sort of use you know there's a there's a, obviously loads of testosterone ones but you know i just wonder if there is you know something that, that we're unaware of you know but for me you know wanting fertility i take hcg i'm going to do it until i have kids and then i'll just i've been without it before um but i'll just probably revert back to, to not having it to be honest i just don't feel massively different i'm just doing it for, a, for that reason to be honest mm -hmm. Okay, that's clear. So uh, let's get to the main topic of today, actually. Uh, what's your opinion on subcutaneous injections for testosterone? I know there have been a lot of studies showing they are as effective as uh, intramuscular ones, but uh, what about all the side effects related to them? As a dermatologist, I get a lot of people asking me about the subcutaneous uh, nodules uh, they get, the, the pain they get, the bruises and so on. So uh, what's your opinion on that? So I think we have to clarify between what's been in the peer-reviewed studies and on the uh, prescription um, testosterones that have been made available in the United States, because they're formulated differently to the formulations we have available here. And, and I can tell you the number of callbacks the doctor would get from patients that would do their 
Yeah. So the no, 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 testosterone right. injection, um, you know, Sustanon or the testosterone amphetamine or any of the testosterone preparations commercially prepared, and and the, sometimes the wife would do the injection for them, and she didn't want to hurt the husband, so she just went in just halfway, basically a subcutaneous injection, and they'd call complaining of lumps and bumps and bruising, mm. um, you know, especially if you put it in your abs, and so. Time and time again, when people were complaining of the lumps and the bumps, it was always like they did a shallow or subcutaneous injection with this commercially prepared preparation. Now, in theory, I think it's amazing if you could do a subcutaneous injection, but in practice, in Europe, in the UK, in Europe, the preparations aren't made that way. Uh, I think that you know some people might be okay with it and get away with it, um, but from patients that have just gone, had, a, had a crack at it, the majority of the time it's been... I've got a swollen red lump, I've got irritation. Um, and, you know, some guys that have, have been okay with it um, and, have, and have attempted it in the past, it's, it's like the whole retitration thing has to happen again, usually because the, the rate of absorption obviously changes. I know that's why they use it um, for like low SHBG and people and things like that, that sort of slow trickle, but uh, it just adds another layer of complexity to it. So you've got, the pre-made formulations here in Europe, you know, we don't have those compounding pharmacies like the U S where, you know, even if someone had like a, pe a peanut, yeah, yeah. yeah, the sterile comment, like if you, if you had a peanut allergy and you know, there was one of the testosterone that contained a, you know, a, a, a type of oil that was, was similar to peanut oil was peanut oil. You, know, you have to just swap to another one. You can't be like, well, I, I'd like this with, you know, or, or, olive oil. Seed or olive oil <laughs> if you're in Italy or those sorts of things. Yeah. So it's, uh, I obviously, clearly in practice around the world they are effective for some people you know it's another option you can try but in terms of in europe it's uh, i think there's that restriction in terms of what what those What's preparations are quite have. viscous they're quite thick they're meant for an intramuscular injection the, the pharmacodynamics uh, kinetics of, of the drug are meant to be put deep into intramuscular uh, deep intramuscularly to large muscle group you know being usually the upper outer glute you know, we, we've seen differences on trough levels on people that inject in the thigh compared to the shoulder compared to the, into the upper outer glute. Normally, you know exactly, you can almost predict where someone would fall on their trough level if they're doing X amount of this particular testosterone ester five or seven days later. It comes mm. in within a few points. But when you get the, the odd ones, then the doctor shows to you that the odd one that that's completely out, like it's either it's usually too low, like because it goes in and out of the muscle too fast because it might be more vascular in the shoulder, uh, plus more risk of injury, then, um, then they end up much lower on the fifth or sixth day. And, um, you know, again, you can retitrate them, you can reorganize it, but there, there is something to the consistency of the way these drugs were studied in their current formulation. I think that's it that they you know even in you know America where they're using another place in the world it, it doesn't work for everyone you know it's just something you can try I suppose if the doctor thinks you might be suitable or if it's a compliance issue or something like that um, uh, I just think in Europe at the moment you know you you've got the creams if you're you know it's, it's such a good way of doing it um, and I think the more sort of um, uh, I suppose attention that gets you know I think the more so yeah. attractive it'll become it's i mean if, if they if they come out with a formulation that's non-irritating very thin uh very easily uh, to inject subcutaneously good that's great and then you can predict on the uh the pharmacokinetics of it that's that's that'd be great but, but still well what is the chemical difference is it the ester no because I, i've had been told it's the propionate uh testosterone propionate but it's not because uh i think it's the vehicle that's different. So the, the vehicles here, are, the, the oils that are used are a lot thicker. And putting in certain, t like in the, in the abs or in the certain bits of the fat, the subcutaneous area, it, it, it changes the absorption rate of it. So like you said, you have to retitrate. You have to know, okay, um, my levels won't be here until this time. Or I have to keep injecting for a few weeks before it reaches a steady state. Where you can kind of know with certainty, you know, and maybe we'll come out that there's a certain type that can be used and it works well and, and, and those sorts of things, but um, we just don't have the, the easiness of bringing up one of those there are injection combined vitamins. So, hey, make ago. some with this oil and this yeah. oils. So it's not just the, the mixes like the sustenon or whatever, it's also the enantate? So yeah, yeah all a, a variety of them have been tried. Yeah, like sub-Q. Sub um, I think it's just not 
from what, what I've heard anyway, it's just not a continuous um, absorption, absorption a, a positive effect, either lumps and bumps. And I think for doctors to be comfortable, you know, you need the right tools even before you start yeah. utilizing it, right? You know? um, so if you start going off license, off label with the method of application, mm. then it, it kind of changes the predictability for. And the UK is, you know, if you, <laughs> the UK in terms of America, in terms of regulation and things of doctors, if you're seen to be doing something that's formulated intramuscularly sub Q, you know, you, you, it also is it's going to put you at risk. And, and there's enough sort of that regulation going on in the UK. That's why we're so behind the times in comparison to, to the US and other places in the world, Asia and all those sorts of places. Um, you know, I think there's an, there's an element of that too. Okay, that's uh, good advice for all uh, UK, European men yeah. considering uh, subcutaneous uh, testosterone injections. Okay, so thank you so much. Anything more you wanted to add uh, in this interview still? No, thank you. No, it's good. It's good. Thanks. Yeah, we, yeah, we covered it well. Thanks. So maybe uh, to end this, uh, tell uh, the men that would want to work with you, how could they do that? Is it only the UK or... Uh, other men in Europe? No, we, um, we've always been open and available to men in both Europe and the UK. So anywhere within the European Union. And we've also been preparing post-Brexit. So we've got um, the facility and, and, and other doctors available in Europe. It's um, a common to, question, isn't it? Everyone's yeah. like, oh, what's so happening everyone's with Everyone's really worried about Brexit. And so we've got the, you know, the ability to still help you know, provide yeah. the service of facilitation uh, throughout Europe and in the UK. We started so, long ago, as soon as there was a yeah. smell of something not, you know, not, not so going So basically well. <laughs> to get all of us, simply, you know, go to our website, balanceofhormones.co.uk, you can fill out a, a, a registration on the form. But, uh, you know, quick, quick spot, it's just giving us a call, you know, numbers on the site, you know, it can be a short call, we can, we can discuss what you need to do next and someone will be there to help you. So that's probably the easiest thing to do, website. Give us a call or fill out a form with your information and you know we'll get back to you okay thank you so much for uh, the interview thank, thank you thank you very much